So in this lecture, I'm going to do a demo in Millsoft Windmill, and this is going to be a little bit different than some of the other demos I've done before, is that we're going to do uh, this from scratch. So it's as if you had just downloaded Windmill, how would you actually set it up before you actually start using it again? And what I would suggest if, um, if you want to kind of really get the most out of this, you would um, probably want to get your laptop set up. And if you have a second screen to actually kind of follow along what I'm doing in Windmill on your computer, um, just to kind of help you learn the material here. So this is a, a demo that a past grader of mine, Hongyi Wu, worked up. So I'm basically going over his slides, plus a few modifications that I made. So as, as far as the outline for this, I'm gonna break this video into three different parts. Uh, we're gonna have part A, where I'm gonna show how you can actually set up the preferences. Uh, also how we can also set up the equipment database and we'll do what I call the system one demo, just get a very basic system up and running. And then the second part, we'll continue on with the demo, we'll add a few more components and we'll do a load allocation and then finally, in the third part, we're going to start looking at how a program like Windmill could be used for voltage regulation. And so what we'll do is we'll add a, just a few more components and then we'll look at the impact of voltage regulators as well as capacitor banks. And then I just want to say a few words about the semester project before we finish up. So again, you know, this is going to be getting into a little bit more detail that we went through before. Um, spend a little bit more time on the equipment models and then kind of do this a little bit more step by step. So one thing when you're working with Millsoft is that there's a, on the default installation, you basically have a C drive set up where you have a Millsoft loaded as one of directories on the C drive. You don't have to set it up this way, but, but this is typically the way I would have it set up on my computer. And you have these various directories on here. You have a blank directory called data, which can just be used to put your own files on there. You have examples. This would be good to go to if you're, you're wanting to go through and um, pull up some examples that came with the installation. There's programs on here that you're not using like LT stands for light table when you're not used that's more for protection so you can just kind of ignore this there's some um, presentations under training which basically this is kind of a modified version of what comes in the training directory and then you would have some documentation that might be useful as well um, and so anyway there's this is kind of like the standard install on here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and just start this from zero. And so the first thing you're gonna to need to do if you start something up from zero is you need to go through, you need to set up a new model. And so if you go to file and click new, then what you're gonna see is you're gonna have the ability of saving this uh, first file. Let me, let's, let's call this sys1 um, somewhere on the hard drive. And what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. In the windmill directory in this data directory. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right here. And I've already got some files from the past I put in here as well. So um, I can go ahead and save this if I want to. Uh, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and basically create a blank system all right and what it's doing in the process is basically setting up all the different data files which are used to um, create circuits um, it's it's also setting up a blank equipment database so this in itself is sort of like a blank slate if you want to think about it that way and so another thing i usually do is i usually just check to see Kind of where stuff is stored at if you go to file view model info you can get a verification that this has indeed uh, been created under millsoft windmill slash data uh, in the sys1.wm directory 
And it's also set up a corresponding equipment database. In this case, what it did is it put this underneath the sys1.wm as a, as a new equipment database. Normally what I do is I put this in parallel because I don't want you to accidentally um, get data from the wrong location. So it makes you do a little extra work, but at least you, you make sure you're, you're getting pointed to the right equipment database. But the default would actually be to put the equipment database underneath sys1.wm with the other, it's kind of mixed with the other circuit files. And so um, this is a blank equipment database. There's not gonna be anything installed in there. So we have to go ahead and add our own models and stuff to this. So the other thing you need to do is you need to go ahead and maybe set up your display. And I'm not gonna go through all the different display options. I'm just gonna go through a few of them. So if you go to view, then what you can do in this case, is you can choose display options. And then once you've chosen display options, you note that for line types, you have the option of either having three phase, two phase and single phase show up as three lines, two lines or one line, or to make use of dashed lines to denote that something's gonna be three phase versus two phase versus one line. I typically like more of a one line diagram. I think it's less cluttered myself. Then as far as the symbols, you can either have the symbols show off to the side of the elements, or you could basically have the elements, um, the, the schematic kind of get incorporated into the diagram, which is more your conventional type of approach. So I usually choose schematic symbols in this case. Uh, note, you can change things as far as zoom and pan factors for the use of the mouse to zoom and pan on the screen. Um, and there's a lot of different sort of options you could set on here, but we're not going to be setting all these up. We're just going to be setting up a few of them. One other place which you can go to is you go to circuit element symbols. So if you go to circuit element symbols, basically what you're um, setting here is what is the size of the icon that's going to show up on the screen when you're showing a map. And so right now everything is set up to kind of a small value. I'm going to go ahead and set these all up to four to kind of make these all a little bit larger. And there's not a simple way I know of other than just to kind of go in here and make these all a little bit larger. And once you've done this already, you can create new files using this same setup here. But for now, we just have to kind of spend a little bit more time setting it up. So I'm, I'm going to leave a map point set to one because we're not really using map points um, in, in this particular case right here. So if I um, set this, click OK, then what this does is it sets some of my default sizes up. And I don't need to have this little explorer window here, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and close that down. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with building a small system. And we're going to have 115 kV source system. So you can think about this as being, say, like subtransmission. This is the high side of this, the substation. And I'm going to set everything up where I'm doing my output calculations on 120 volt base. So this is basically to enable me to see what the end customer is going to see. I'm also going to put some source impedance in here. I'm going to put some source impedance on the 115 kV side. So if I were going to take this 115 kV and uh, divide it by a square root of three and divide it by this positive sequence impedance, what this is going to give me, this is going to give me a three phase fault current. So this is kind of like the Thevenin equivalent impedances for the transmission system. I'm going to have a substation transformer. I'm just going to make this 5000 kVA and I've got some values associated with this for the impedance. It's, it's going to convert the voltage down to 12.47 kV. It's going to be grounded Y. Note on the high side, it's delta. And this is very typical for systems in the US, you have delta connection on the transmission side, grounded Y on the low side, because in this way, what you do on distribution doesn't impact your transmission fault currents. I'm going to put a 5,000 foot 
overhead three phase distribution line that's going to be set up for four odd ACSR. Uh, I'm going to have a node at the end of this line. I'm going to call it node one. And then um, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to set some loads up where I'm going to put in billing load. And so this is the, the billing load information right here. Um, something else I'm going to do in this case as well, besides having the billing load, is I'm going to put calculated values in here for now. But then later on in the second part of the video, then I'll use a load allocation where I actually get the calculated load based on the billing load data. But for now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put billing load information and then kind of do the manual override and putting calculated load in. So what I need to do is I need to build the system up. Now, it would help if I had some of this equipment already built in a, an equipment database. And so I could, for example, I can go to EQDB and what I could do is I can start entering in some of this equipment. In. And so, for example, if I want to add a transformer, collect transform, you'll note here that I don't have any pre-built transformer elements stored in here already, right? So what I can do is I can go ahead and just start adding my own elements. If you click in new, then it asks you, well, what's the, the name of this element? I'm just going to make this sub transformer. Click OK. And then this is going to be a three phase transformer. Uh, and then I can go ahead and put the impedances in here. And so the impedances, I said that the percent impedance is 8.06. So this is the magnitude of the impedance and the X to R um, ratio in this case is going to be eight. So I can go ahead and put that value in. And then uh, I can put in the rating information as well. So that's 5,000. And I don't have any information for core loss. I'm just going to leave it off. And basically, if I'm going to click OK, then what I've got is I've got this substation transformer set of values that's, that's in my equipment database. Uh, one other thing I could do on here is I could put grounding information in here, but I don't have any, I don't have any um, ground impedances in here, so I don't need to, to put that in here right now. And so anyway, I can go ahead and just click OK. And then I can move on. I can also put my own load model definition in here. So if I go to the equipment database, I can go to load mix. And this is where I would create a um, load model where I would have a mix of constant power, constant impedance, constant current. Millsoft defaults to having all load constant KVA. So you don't select anything. I mean, it'll still be OK. But just for the sake of being consistent, I can go ahead and create a new piece of equipment. And I'm going to have a Y connected PC load. Let's see if this takes it. Yeah. And then I can have whatever ratio I want. So I'm, again, I'm going to make this all constant power and I'm going to make this Y connected. And so that's kind of denoted in the, 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 the name right here. So again, what I can do is I can just make sure I have the right load mix and click OK to exit. Now, for putting in overhead lines, you know we have to have conductor data and we have to have construction data. So if I go to my overhead section for the equipment database, you see that it predefines the different categories of conductor. But if I click on here, I don't have any existing conductors in my database right here. What for the project, what I like you guys to do is just build this up from scratch. But let's suppose that you wanted to go ahead and start working on projects and you didn't really have any conductor data to work with, right? So how could you actually get started on this? So the way you would get started on this is you can import it from another equipment database. And what you can do in this case is if you see in this particular window that you have an import function, what you can do is select this import and then what it'll 
it'll do is it'll allow you to go to a location where you would have some sample data. In the case of MILSOF distribution, there's actually a directory called sample EQDB. And there's an EQDB, there's a sample database that already has some data preloaded in. So if I would click OK in this situation, then what you'd see on the right is you'd see all the different types of data that could be loaded in. So for example, for ACSR, I've got all these different conductors that are already in the database. So what I can do is if I want to do an import, let's suppose I want to just choose them all and just kind of load them in, then I can select all this equipment to import on the right. And then what I could do is I can do a copy selected. And so when I do the copy selected, what it does is it, is it imports all this data in. And now if I go to ACSR, you see I've got all these different pieces of information from my conductor already loaded in. Now, one thing I want to warn you about for the project is that the data that I give you, you might have 4 out ACSR, but the values for the project differ a little bit. That's why I suggest you just kind of load this all from scratch because depending on where you buy this wire from, it could be slightly, it could be slightly different as far as some of the parameters. So don't assume there's industry standards that this is all based on. This is just something that got kind of loaded in with the, um, with the Millsoft demo. But utilities typically would build up their own databases based on the vendors that they buy all this stuff from. So once you've got this loaded in, then the next thing would be you would put in construction information. And so if you go to EQDB and if you were to go to construction type, uh, again, you can see that we've got some defaults in here already, but let's suppose we add our own. And so if we click new in this case, then what we can do is we can, we can add a piece of equipment and let's just say it's gonna be overhead example. And typically you'll have some sort of a name that's more descriptive with this. Like you'll have utilities will have different type of vertical, horizontal construction. You know, they'll, they'll have special types of names in their case. So if you had this new piece of equipment, then what you can do is you can go ahead and put in the conductor distances. And so we're gonna specify the distances. Make sure that as far as your distances, that you have the right units. So I'm going to select feet in this case. And um, I'm going to use the bottom of the pole as my zero reference for the Y directions. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put some values in here where phase A is 29 feet above ground and phase B is um, three feet to the right of A, and it's going to be 29 feet above ground. Uh, phase C would be seven feet from A, 29 feet above ground. And then the neutral is going to be 3.5 feet from phase A, and it's going to be 25 feet above ground. Now, you'll note in here that I'm putting values in here for three phase. What happens if this is only single phase? Well, what Millsoft does, if it's single phase, it'll choose the P2 position. And so it'll take what's loaded at P2 and they use that for phase A. If you just have two phases, it takes the P1 and the P3 positions, which are the outside positions. And you can actually adjust this if you want to. What you can also do too, if you want to do completely balanced analysis, you can make this transpose, but we're going to leave this non-transposed. And so anyway, um, we, we got this set up now and I can go ahead and click OK. And now I got construction information in here as well. And so now what I could do is I can start adding components. And the first component you're going to have to add is you're going to have to add a source in here. And so if you left click on add source, uh, you see that the cursor is now set for add. That means as soon as you left click, it's going to drop this element on the screen. So if I left, left click, then I've got my source on here. Now, 
there's a lot of different things I need to set up. This is 115 kV source. And so um, one thing I want to do is just to make sure I see the name. If I go to view, circuit element labels, just want to make sure this is on so I see the names of the elements. And then if I left click on here, double click, then, and then if I click on this editor, then what I have is I have the editor now for the source. Um, I could go through and I could start by changing the name. Note it gives you a warning here because if you, this name doesn't link up right with your database, you can, you can corrupt your database. And so you should probably avoid changing this name or be very careful about changing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the name. And I'm just gonna change it to sub. Millsoft has a certain way of coming up with these different names. And so it'll auto generate them but they're not always convenient. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I show my labels. And then um, I'm gonna have this set up for 120 volt base, so this is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and make this 115 kV, so it's 115,000 volts line. If I hit return, this is gonna to correspond to, oops, left out a zero here. This is gonna to correspond to 66,395 volts line to ground. This is a um, Y ground type of a source in this case. Um, note the transformer right, for stepping down is gonna be Delta connected, but I, I'm gonna have um, my, this is kind of like modeling my generation source in a way. So I'm gonna make this Y grounded. And note I got this set up for regulation. So what this means is whatever I have for the voltage here, this is what, the program's gonna set this voltage at when it runs the, the voltage drop study. And so this is kind of a, of a slack bus in a way, if you wanna think about it that way, but it's a slack bus that I can specify internal impedances for. Now, um, this case, I've actually got those impedances, so I need to make sure I get that set up. So anyway, I've got all these values in here loaded in, except I, I haven't set up my impedances yet. So what I need to do is I need to get these impedances set up. And what I can do is I can go click on this little symbol here. This takes me to the editor. Note I don't have any equipment set up, so I have to select new in this case. And I'm going to call this 115 AV source. And I'm going to go ahead and put those impedances that I talked about before, where these are going to be in terms of ohms. And if these are in terms of ohms, I don't have to put base KVA and base KV in here. I only need this if I'm putting this in per unit. And so these are in terms of total units. I'm going to put in the, um, the sequence values. And um, this is going to be for the positive sequence 8.4. For the reactive part, that's the real part. For the reactive part, I've got 21.4. And then for note, what it does is it auto populates the negative sequence with the same values. This is typically what you would see. And then for the zero sequence, I've got 19 um, at J44.9. All right. So this represents, this represents the transmission system impedance up to the high side of the substation transformer. So once I've got this value in, then I can click OK. And note what it does is it auto populates this for both impedance min and max. Usually when you're doing fault studies, the transmission system values change depending on loading conditions. So you can actually put two different impedances in here, but in this case, we're just using one impedance. So um, now that I've got these in, um, I've got my model, looks like it's set up properly. And then what I can do is I can add the next component in here. Now, let's suppose I'm adding a transformer in here. I'm adding a, a second component in here. We're just going to go ahead and um, just add this in. 
what you need to make sure of, if I left click the button, then note the substation icons not highlighted. If I were going to go ahead and add a transformer in here, it wouldn't connect properly. So if I want to connect this transformer properly, I got to go ahead and click what the parent element's going to be. Uh, and then what I can do is I can add the transformer. Here's the transformer icon. And wherever I left click, that's going to determine where this transformer is going to go. So if I just get this position, you could see that where I had this mouse at when I left click, that's where it put the transformer there. Now let's suppose I don't like that location. I can go up to this little move symbol, click that, and then what it does is it enables me to move this around a little bit, all right? And then if I were going to right click, then I can pan it around. If I use a little wheel on the mouse, then I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. And so as I add the elements in here, I might have to adjust this a little bit. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the transformer up. So if I left click on this a couple times, then I've got the um, window for the transformer. I'm going to go ahead and rename it. I'm going to call it step down transformer. Usually these substations would have a name, and so I would probably put the substation name in here, but I don't have a name for it in this case. And then click OK. Uh, it's going to be three phase, uh, ABC. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I can see the components in here. And then this is where I can then specify the type of transformer connection I have. I'm going to make this delta Y ground. And so make this delta Y ground. It's not going to make any difference um, really too much right now for doing the voltage drop study. Would it make a difference if I'm doing the fault analysis? Uh, and then as far as the, the voltage ratio, then we said on the, the primary side that this is 115,000 volts. Oops. So I got this. And then the secondary side is 12,470. So put that in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make the system base the same. I'm not using it, but I'll just go ahead and put this in. And then one thing I can do is I can go ahead and get impedances in here from the equipment database. So if I go ahead and select this, I've got the substation transformer in my database. I just click OK. And then what this does is going to make use of this impedance information. And so now what this does is this gives me the, the transformer information. OK, so anyway, this is kind of what we did is we just went ahead and linked this element from the equipment database to the to this transformer to the step down transformer. All right, so now what I can do next is I can go ahead and add an overhead line. If you want to go ahead and move these around, if you left click on the um, the wording, the label, you can move this label around a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to see things. And now what I can do is I can add uh, an overhead line. So again, you left click, make sure this element you're going to attach to the overhead line to is highlighted. And then if I go up to the overhead line icon, I can click this. The cursor changes to add. And then what I can do is I can add this overhead line. All right. So what I can do next then is I can go ahead and change the parameters of the overhead line. I'm going to change the name of this to oh, L1. It's going to be three phase. I can have the name show up on the screen. You can see that the parent element is step down transformer. So this actually shows in this case. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and use this, the um, conductors from my equipment database. So if I, if I have a four out ACR, uh, ACSR S slash one, basically I can go to ACSR. I can choose the four out 
and um, click OK in this case. And then what this does is it auto populates. Now, as far as the preferred neutral, what it's going to choose for the preferred neutral is the one on ACSR S, ACSR um, six slash one. Uh, we're not so worried about this. You can always get into more detail if you want. Um, we've got one neutral wire in this case. And then for the construction, we're going to choose overhead example. All right. So this is what we had entered in before. And one last thing I need to do is I need to put the feet. Now, this value in feet right now is based on how I drew this on the screen. You know, the screen's got a scale associated with it where one inch is 64 feet. Um, we're gonna wanna override this and I'm gonna make this 5,000 feet. All right, so just double check here to make sure I've got everything. So I get the, the right results when I'm finally done here. Yeah, looks like I can, I'm okay. So, um, go ahead and close this, and now I got the the L1 conductor added. Now the last, the other thing I need to do on here is I need to add a load, and so there's different types of ways you can add load. I mean, you can add a node that would be give you a load value. You can actually go over here, and you can have different icons show up as far as residential, commercial, large power load, whatever. But I'm just going to kind of use the generic load element. So if I want to add the load to the end of L1, I've got to click L1, then I go to node, basically go over here, left click, and then the node shows up on the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify node one. First of all, I'm going to change the name. I'm going to make this node one instead of node four. Uh, it's three phase node in this case. You can see the parent is L1. So this is always something good to check. Just make sure the topology is right. I'm going to go ahead and display the label in this case. And then what we're going to do as far as a load settings is for the load mix, then we're going to choose YPQ load. This is what we just defined. Now, in this case, since this is a node, anything I add on here is going to be a spot load. So I, I don't need to mess around with load location in this case. Um, but if this were a line, what I could actually do is I can make this a uniformly distributed load versus a load on the source end or load on the load end, right? So in class, when we talk about spot load versus uniformly distributed load, this is where we could actually set this up. But know what I'm doing in this case is I'm, I'm putting the load on the node and making this actually a spot load in this case. So we're not going to have to worry about setting this up. And if you want to make this more sophisticated, you can set up load zones and things like that. And you can have building codes and everything, but we're not going to, we're not going to go into that much detail. So then the other things we need to set up, I mentioned before that we had billing load. We wanted to enter for this. And so the building building load, I've got 400 kilowatts per phase. Enter this in. I've got KVA. This you can think about this as the transformer size. So for the single, let's just say this is consisted of three single phase transformers. Um, that's what these KVA values could correspond to. All right, putting these values in. Note I'm not putting a transformer here at this load. I don't really care in this case. I'm more interested in primary side values of voltage. So I'm just simply entering in the billing information. And since I don't want to run load allocation, I'm just going to go ahead and push in calculated load in this case. And then the calculated load in this case is shown here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put in unbalanced load. That's what I had in the problem statement. So I got 1,000 kW at power factor of 90%. And 
And then for phase B, I've got 800 at power factor of 85. And then for phase C, I've got 1200 at 95. So anyway, you can see what this totals and as a check, you say I got the percent KVA set to 100% in this particular case. And then these load amps are the, is the current you would have at this particular base voltage. So it's not really, this isn't really from a power flow. This is what you would have if, you know, if you had like a uh, constant current type of load and you're linearizing around this base voltage right here. So anyway, if if I'm doing load allocation, I don't have to put this in. I'm going to get this from this billing load, but I, I just don't want to get into this just yet. I'll do that in the second part. So now I've got um, everything all loaded in. Oh, sorry, got this value here wrong. Here, here we go. Now it matches up. So 3,000 kVA total, 3,000 kilowatts total. Yeah, here we go. Now we got this match up. Um, so anyway, I can close this. And now I can run my voltage drop analysis. So if you go ahead and choose the voltage drop analysis, Then if I go to analysis, analysis manager, I could see all the different options set up for this. If I choose the sub window voltage problems, what you can see here that the voltage is under 118 volts, it'll show up red. If the voltage is over 126 volts, it'll show up blue. Um, these are things you could set up so you can quickly see whether circuit voltages or over and above a certain target. Uh, similarly with capacity problems, what you could do is if you have like say um, overhead and you could actually get this to show up warnings like if you're over a certain percentage of capacity, right? And so you could set up different sort of warning levels depending on you know what you want to be looking at. And so this is just a useful way to you know, color code the screen. You'll want to use this in your project to kind of make it easy to kind of see what's going on in this case. So we'll just kind of stick with the defaults, but I just wanted to show that to you. And then what you could also do is you can look at settings and then for the analysis settings, then uh, what you can do on here is you can see that we're going to keep charging calculations on. We're including generators and motors, even though we don't have any, you can put a growth factor in that you could use this for your project to have you know, show it happens under different load conditions. We won't assume transposition. And then you can see here that if um, I have a, a line model that has load on it, we can make it a, so that it's uniformly distributed versus at the load end, or we can individually set it. Um, but we're not going to mess with this right now. We'll just assume all the loads spot load. Uh, regulators infinite means I could have taps that are floating point numbers, I could have a tap like 7.3. And then capacitors in the voltage drop study actually can be controlled based on the node voltage. And so we're just going to use the, the last status of the capacitor for the whether the switch is open or closed in this case. Then if you go to analysis settings, uh, you can make it balanced, but we're going to make this unbalanced. You can choose a number of iterations. You can choose a voltage drop tolerance. So we'll leave it at 0.01%. You can see that the base output voltage is set to 120 volts in this case. So now it looks like I've got everything all set up. Um, hopefully, if I click the execution on here, I don't get any errors. So that's a relief. Uh, it iterates for five iterations. So this power flow we talked about in class, you've got to go through the steps five different size times. You can see by how much the voltage changes percent at the worst case node. And then what we do after that is we can look at the results. Now, I could go to a voltage drop study or what I can do is I can right click and I can pull up the K 
calculated data box. And this is a kind of a default data box that shows values. And you can modify um, what you want to show in these data boxes, but usually these are good enough for what we're doing. And then you'll see the values associated with this. And this kind of matches up with what I was running before in this case. And so anyway, um, these are the results that you have. And since there's not a lot of load in this case, then I don't get uh, a lot of voltage drop. You know, basically the transmission starts at 126. And by the time I get down the load, I've got 120.733 volts on, on the A phase. And it's a little bit of imbalance in here, but not too much imbalance. Okay, so finally, if you want to see the report, you can click on this little report icon. Now there's two different types of reports. There's what they call a detailed report and a summary report. If you just show the summary report, it just shows kind of at a high level um, what's going on with this particular system. Um, usually if you want to get a little bit more detail, you choose the detail report. And then this does is gives me a little bit more resolution, what's going on. And say we've already kind of talked about this in class. So I'm not going to get into it right now. But basically, you see, you see the actual values of voltage line to ground. And you see the volt values on 120 volt base in this case. But anyway, just watch out for this summary report versus detailed report. Because if you want me to help you debug, you need to send me the detailed report. OK, so now we're kind of to the end of this system one part here. And then um, when we pick up again in the second video, then we'll, we'll kind of build on this right here.